The Y, or Upsilon system, was an electronic distance measuring system used by the Luftwaffe in World War II to aid aircraft navigation. Ja, and so was the name for the 16, no, ZY, Z for Zielflug, and Y for another type, I tell you. With this system, you can give the ground station where you are in the distance. In a previous video, we showed you the Fugi 16 ZY, or ZY, and we touched on its important role in Luftwaffe fighter group navigation. But we only covered the method of operation of the electronic distance ranging system in broad terms. In this video, we're going to look at the Y Gerät, or Y device, in more detail and show you a demonstration of a Y station in simulated operation. If you want to learn more about the Y method of distance measurement, we've included a link in the text below this video to a good source for further reading. But if you want to learn the history of the Y-beam system and where it stands in the Battle of the Beams during the early years of the Second World War, then there is no better guide than R.V. Jones's classic Most Secret War. By the winter of 1940, British electronic countermeasures had rendered the standard X-beam navigation system virtually useless. At best, they could only be used against targets in southern England close to the Channel coast. Deep penetration raids to the industrial centres in the Midlands and further north were impossible with the compromised Votan 1 X-beam system. Although the new Y-method beam system was a response to countermeasure activity, Britain's scientific intelligence had learned of Germany's development of the Y-method of electronic beam measurement as early as November 1939 via the Oslo report and pre-flight development of the system had already occurred in Rechlin, north of Berlin, as early as 1938, many months before the start of the war. The Y system was one of the critical new technologies described in the Oslo report, in which an anonymous author reported the principal details of a night fighter radio measuring system, later called the Y device. The identity of the author was revealed in 1989 as German mathematician and physicist and committed anti-Nazi Hans Ferdinand Mayer, at the time employed by Siemens and Halske. The Oslo report was found in the British legation in Oslo on the 5th of November 1939. The anonymous document revealed several secret objectives of Germany's military research, but in particular it revealed the distance measuring equipment soon to be called the Y device. Hans Mayer's detailed report even delivered the formula for calculating the phase angle the key to unlocking the Y method. When we talk about the, uh, the uh, beams, uh, was this the last uh, system was a, a measure, the measurement, the distance measurement by electric, how it works. The Y device used a single narrow beam from a ground station laid over the target and transmitted as a series of pulses. A transponder on board the aircraft received the beam signal and immediately retransmitted the signal back to the original station. By analysing the phase difference between the outgoing and incoming signals, the distance to the plane could be calculated with impressive accuracy. The aircraft was not required to fly the beam, as with earlier systems. Ground controllers would plot the position of the aircraft and give direct instructions over the radio to the pilot to correct his position. The ground control equipment limited the system, as the ground station could only guide one plane. Here on this uh, picture, you can see how one man is um, working on this, uh, on this system. And um, I have uh, made uh, only a demonstration model because such a, a complete uh, system is not available anywhere. Yeah? So, how it works. Here we have a transmitter. This transmitter sends a, sin sends a signal to the aircraft, but also on this valve. And from the aircraft comes back the signal yeah, by a um, um, transponder and what's received in this receiver. And from this receiver, also the signal goes on this um, a, a tube. So, but there was 
there was a, a, a difference from to the sea, to the plane, back to the, to the uh, ground station. And this difference is, is shown here on two beams, if they are uh, not together, so they, so they out. Now <coughs> you can see the two lines and I have to, to put the two lines together in kilometers and fine with this. Now, can, can, now I can look in the table where it's D and 0, 5. And uh, from this table I can look how is the, uh, the distance to the aircraft. This is a, this is a typical method to, uh, to measurement the, uh, the distance. The Y device system was also used to locate and guide German fighter planes intercepting Allied bombers. The system could establish the direction and distance, thus location of a fighter, and use the same radio signal for two-way voice communications. Usually, only one fighter in a group was fitted with the ZY system, known as the Y fighter, and it was specially painted so that it could be seen easily and followed by other aircraft in the group. The usual control range was up to 250 kilometers, depending on the aircraft's altitude. Dieter points out the two antennas the system uses. The one at the top is for normal communications and the larger whip aerial, usually located underneath the aircraft, was used for distance measurement. The drum shaped antenna matching boxes can also be seen. The system was used to control fighter groups intercepting allied bomber streams day or night and it was sometimes used to direct individual night fighters. As a result of the Oslo report, the British were ready for this system even before it was used. British scientific intelligence was able to transmit identical false signals, interfering with the phase shift calculations, making the system unreliable and therefore unusable. The Luftwaffe gave up using the Y system after only a few minor raids. Considering the British too advanced in radio countermeasures and further development of radio navigation systems was abandoned. That's it for this video. If you want to see more like this, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, from Dieter and me, bye for now.